So if you're drawing a directional field, what you're drawing are a bunch of slopes. So Y prime is talking about the slopes of this relation, right? And so to find out the slopes, you can pick any point. Like let's start at zero, zero. I'll change the color. So we get the point zero comma zero. The X coordinate is zero and the Y coordinate is zero. But actually for this slope field, we only care about the Y coordinates. The slope field says you're supposed to plug in a Y coordinate, square it, and subtract it by four. So zero squared is zero. Zero subtracted by four is negative four. So at the point zero comma zero, we have a slope of negative four. So it should look something like this, decreasing pretty steeply from left to right. Okay, and then you can pick another point. Like if you go here at one comma zero, uh, we're still plugging in zero and for y. So this has the same slope. So we have the same slopes throughout the x-axis because every y-coordinate is zero. Okay, and then uh, if we go up a point, if we go up to zero comma one, this means we're plugging in one in for y. So one squared is one, one minus four is negative three. So it has a still a negative slope, but a little less steep. And if you go to the right, this is uh, one comma one. The y coordinate is still one. So if you plug in y equals one in there, you're going to get the same slope. So still negative slopes, just a little less steep. And then if we go up here to zero comma two, you're plugging in two in for y. And you get a slope of zero, right? Because if you plug in two in here, two squared is four. Four minus four makes zero. And so y prime is zero. And so uh, that's an interesting point because the slopes have leveled off. Let's see what happens if we go one more point up. Sorry, so we plug in, this is 0, 3. So 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 4 is a positive 5. This has a really steep positive slope, right? Probably should be a little steeper than its opposite down there because it's a positive 5 for a slope. And I'm doing it for all the other ones on the x equals 3 line because if you plug in any of these coordinates, like say this is negative 4, comma 3, we don't care about the x coordinate. We only care about plugging the y coordinate. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 4 makes 5. So the slope is 5 at that coordinate. That's why I'm doing it the same for all of them. And where else? How about when y is negative 2? That's going to be another interesting spot. So if you plug in y equals negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So it's going to have a slightly less steep slope. And then if you plug in negative 2, so here is 0 comma negative 2, it's got a slope of 0. And then if you go a little further, if you go down to 0 comma negative 3, Negative 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 4 is a positive 5, so the slopes look like this. Okay, that's probably enough to get the right graph. But look, I'm drawing them this way because I need all my miniature little slopes I'm drawing to be positive, increasing from left to right. Okay, um, are there equilibria? Yes, there are. At this y equals 2 line, when y equals 2, then we have slopes of 0 all the way across, y equals 2. And then negative 2, oh, but it wants least to greatest. So negative 2 is the first equilibria. 2 is the other one. And then what, what is the stability? So um, an equilibria is considered stable if the slopes are pointing towards the equilibria. So like y equals negative 2 above, the slopes are pointing down towards the equilibria. and Because you read those left to right. And if you look below, the slopes are pointing up towards the equilibria. So this is stable. This one is stable. And then the y equals 2 equilibria. Um, you re remember, you read the slopes left to right. So this these slopes are moving away from the equilibria as we read it from left to right. These slopes are moving away as we read it from left to right. So this is unstable, this one here.